Hey, I want to thank Steve and Jay for your recurring uh, contribution. Uh, very much appreciate it. Um, and, uh, and welcome back to everyone. I'm going to um, address details, as you can see, and uh, we've talked about this before, and I think maybe even one, by one, maybe even titled details, but I want to talk about this for a couple reasons. Um, and one of them is because of the very use of the term detail. What does it mean, right? Details, you know. Um, it has a kind of a connotation of unimportance. You know, it's just a detail. That's just a detail. <laughs> and, um, uh, but for a realist, it has, uh, you know, it just means something at some and somewhere, another, a, a sort of a lower level of some lesser importance. It does have, it still has that. But detail also has this idea of meaning uh, little tiny things. When are you going to get to the details? And, um, and it, you know, mean it, 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 there's something about that connotation that's okay. It's rather like what we mean as uh, Impressionists. But um, let me just do that usual, the codicil. Let's just keep remembering that I'm doing this as a discussion about a way of painting that has to do with, that's in line with the Boston School, but has to do with just simply uh, authoritatively reflecting the information in the screen in front of you, shall we say, within a viewfinder, and uh, finding best practices for that sort of thing, and just talk about the, the things we talk about, the things we're thinking about when we try to achieve that. Joshua says, how do you or any person wanting to focus on the light, color, and values ignore the details? So how do you ignore the details? So again, that definition gets to be pretty serious for us. What do we mean by details? Um, do we mean little unimportant things or things we'll get to later and all things, sorts of things in that category? Or has details got even more of a pejorative, you know, in the sense that uh, we ignore them? Uh, they're, un they're so unimportant, we ignore them. It, this all gets back to a discussion that Ang has with us about depth rather than elaboration. I mean, sorry, about um, uh, breadth rather than elaboration. B R E A D T H. It's mean it means broadly expressed forms and not count. He said, "Why why do you make that out of three little forms when you can make it out of one big one?" Um, you can see that particularly well in in uh, Degas in his too in in Ang's uh, drawings. You can see where he's managed the entire form of an arm without resorting to noodling little pieces anatomically. And we, he refers to that in one of these quotes too. <laughs> I wonder if it might be useful to actually refer to that quote quicker than I meant to, but I might I might pick that up first and then come back. But let's but keep on this idea. And now, first of all, the focus on the light, color, and values. We're not focusing on it. We're using that to make pictures with. It's just that we're we are we're focused on the big impression. Everything that has to do, uh, everything that has bearing, at, you know, with what we look at. So color and light and as much as form and shape uh, are in those categories, but we're not doing them exclusively and we're not doing them at the expense of. So that gets us into a question about what's first, second, and third. Uh, does it mean that we're focusing on those things initially at the expense of, and yes, you could say that's true, that we are, we're doing that at the expense of, 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 of uh, many little things. We'll talk about that very specifically with pictures. Uh, but um, I find this particularly difficult with faces. Uh, someone's, someone's, I have no issue. Uh -oh. I have no issue and uh, sometimes I get caught up in the details. When it comes to fabrics or clothing, I don't have this issue. And I find those items look the best in my paintings. Is there a way to train yourself to ignore the trap of details in working on a face? That word, the trap of details. Now that's, that's more useful in one sense. And that is that if you just, uh, if you have no capacity to differentiate between important things and less important things, you need to get it. You need to achieve, uh, you know, acquire that ability uh, because there are such things and you're going to be exhausting yourself unnecessarily uh, if, you, um, if you live in everything counts as much as everything else, right? But I'm just going to look at pictures with you. Uh, oh, I have this other quote from... Uh, 
Joe. He says, for me, the struggle has always been getting sucked into a problem in one of those smaller areas. Now, that's an interesting one. So smaller areas is that details and losing sight of the whole. By the way, Joe, I didn't forget the rest of your uh, question to me, and I do mean to get to it, uh, but, um, but I appreciated having this be rather similar, reminding me of um, uh, to tie it on to what we're talking about here. It's potentially the same or similar. And anyway, it's a problem in one of those smaller areas, losing sight of the whole. Losing sight of the whole is a pretty big thing, but let's just see what we mean by all these things in our way of working. One thing I want to repeat again, as I said, this is Impressionism, sort of via the Boston School. Of course, via me, I've just, everything is one's own interpretation. Not even not of the Boston School, but of nature itself and best practices. You know, we all do that. We, 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 as we said in the recent videos, we borrow from the masters. But there's one thing we have in common, and that, one great thread we have in common is that the, and that is the attempt to master nature, which means can you put down what nature looks like in front of you authoritatively as a first step in in, in picture making. Can you manage the stuff that will do that for you? And that's the world of values and line. If you, and by line, I just mean the spatial and uh, color. So, uh, you know, I, I think it might be worthwhile for me to just jump to that end quote. Let me see if I can find it quickly without uh, dragging you into stuff. Um, yeah, this one here. Watch out there, Ang says. You're slipping into it. You've indicated here something which I don't see in nature. Why do you underscore it? Because you know it's there, as distinct from actually seeing it. Now, pause me for a second. You know we're not talking about quite the same thing. He, Aang isn't. But I'm going to treat this thing as if he were. I'm going to change some of the words. Watch out there. You're slipping into it. You've indicated here something which, which I don't see in nature yet. <laughs> Why do you exaggerate it? Why do you, why do you try to show me it's there? I did have a student once. I asked why that person was, was uh, overstating very minor things. And that person said to me, I, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to um, uh, show the nuances. Well, by definition, nuances <laughs> are hard to find, hard to see. To show them would make them into something more major, right? Anyway, but this is, he's talking about anatomy here. He's asking, listen to the rest of this. It's quite funny. <laughs> because you know it's there. That's why you're drawing it. So that's the, that's the, the dilemma of anatomy. Have you been studying anatomy? There now. <laughs> that's, that's what that dreadful science leads to, that horrendous science, which I can't think of without loathing. Had I been obliged to study anatomy, gentlemen, I would have never made myself a painter. <laughs> well, uh, uh, this is just love Ang, right? Be a great academic. <laughs> One to think about. He all, by the way, he also said the bones are all his friends, <laughs> he'd lost, he'd for, whose, whose names he'd forgotten. Ang's very interesting. We all are, by the way. And some of this is developmental. Some of this is truly developmental. But the one thing you're going to have to learn, though, is the world of color values is the world that will make you anything. You, got, you can't make anatomy without making the color values. But if he's looking and knowing all sorts of things and drawing things he can't see, then what's it, what good is it doing him? He's, he's not able to render what he sees in front of him? Well, in our case, that's what we're saying. Can you render what you see in front of you the way it looks? And that's the relational world, you know. Um, so um, we're, we're not painting what we know. But anyway, he says, just copy nature naively like a simpleton. And that in itself will amount to something. So that's um, naively, but, you know, this may be the first time that word shows up. I, it, it may not be, but um, Monet is, well, that's his word, right? That's the word for the Impressionist. But that's the word for anybody who has to get a shape accurately. You have to stop seeing what it is and what it means and all those things. You have to just learn to see, for example, how the particular angle of a set of points relates to vertical. That sort of thing, right? Now, nah, um, but that's how's that helping you with details? It's not helping you at all. But I want to do that because this, I want to talk about that because this isn't really about the science of um, anatomy. It's the but it's the idea. If you paint objects, you'll have a whole different idea of what a detail is. You'll think my fingernail is a detail, 
and more than three other things. So let's, let me show you what I mean by that. And by the way, in, in relation to the hand, the importance of my hand, my finger, <laughs> fingernail is a detail, right? Not arguing that point. But I'll tell you, the reason is different from what you may think. All right, so let's just go to the beginning of this thing. I wanted to um, um, take this set of this list here, and I want to I, I want to review some of the work below. You know, as it's coming up, Vermeer, uh, myself, uh, some Boston School guys, including at the very end some uh, Paxton. So um, I want you to see. I want you to see the sorts of things that we're going to be talking about. So I'll initiate it right here. So that, first of all, forget the idea of focus. We're not focusing on like color and values. We're focusing on the big impression, right? And so even when you're putting colors down and, 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 and value relationships, you're going to get light. You're trying, you're, you're putting those down accurately. That will deliver you the light, right? Because you care about that, right? But you just as much care about where they're placed on the page because you care, as it were, about drawings, right? So I don't want you to think that we're doing something different from that. We're doing all things. So you get down to that bottom, it says all over the place at once. Well, we mean all the horses at once, which is, you know, it's, it's colors, values, and, you know, and things having to do with space, shape. So let's define details again. Let's be very specific about this because details... Uh, as I said, means also, <laughs> I see I got some funny typos in here. Uh, it, it, details uh, just mean, you know, it has that whole thing about unimportant. But in our case, what we're talking about is we're talking about secondary things, things that come later and don't have to come at all. Now, that's just a thought you might want to keep in your head. But details isn't the best word for that because you know, it has, maybe has more to do with, with time. <laughs> I'm, laugh, I'm laughing at myself. I'm naive eyes and the S is stolen from the solo lines. Hi, yeah, yeah. Um, my eyes aren't what they used to be, <laughs> definitely looking at a computer. Um, but so there, there you see this follow-up, majors from minors, and there are levels of information in pictures, right? Remember what we're doing is collating data. So what's a detail, right? Well, that's if you have A to Z, and then you get down into A1, A1, um, uh, uh, lowercase d, uh, 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 ii, now we're talking about very low level details compared to the importance of the major categories of A, B, C, and D, okay? So majors versus minors, major categories, minor categories. Well, in our case, they're visual, right? So that's why I talk about levels. That has everything to do with what's coming up next year, and that's the timing of the visual order. So there are things that are very strong to your eyes, they're very weak to your eyes. Those are A, the ABCs, right, the strong ones. And if you don't know how to alphabet, if you don't know how to put those in order, then God help you with everything else, right? Uh, so um, viewing broadly, um, now we're talking about now the whole idea of why is it so important to, uh, well, I shouldn't say why is it so important, what's a precedent for, for dealing with majors as a priority, right? One of the things I learned uh, middle, in the middle of my studies with Gamma was the idea of significant form. Remember somebody talking about it with relation to Baudry, significant line. What's significant? And, and so we're talking about prioritization. Uh, it, significant be, could mean many things, by the way. But we're talking about that idea that there are some things more important than others. So uh, if, you, if you're viewing broadly, the skull, the egg of the head, is more important than all the bumps on it. Right? I mean, it is more important on lots of levels. First of all, because it'll be seen as a unit before other things, or and I should even say to the extent that it's seen before other things, but that's a majors versus minors uh, category too, the broadly seeing. And it means though that you're not just putting in a thousand indiscriminate details just because they're there. And that's where the word details actually means uh, things and stuff. You know, and you know, when you're talking about uh, painting a portrait, for example, you don't go counting your way across a face to see how many warts you can find. I mean, you can, but that's a different conversation. It doesn't take in the idea of majors and minors like it should. It, it isn't important, it's about far more important that the skull and the form of the skull is there than it is you have warts on the skin, right? And in the end, it's fairly distasteful unless you're just trying to, unless that's your objective, of course, to show warts on the skin. The new realism might do that, I don't know. All the warts is the expression, <laughs> the, the, old, the old definition of realism. Uh, so, and a key to this, of course, is the naive eye. Uh, the naive eye is the, um, 
what we talked about before. Um, it when when we're looking for what's important, when we're looking for what ain't details, we're looking at this thing as a field of color values, and what happens where they meet, and how big they are, things like that, right? And uh, and I say what they do when they meet. So some of that has to do with the sharpness of edges, the 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 the, the, the contrasts and these things producing effects and all that sort of stuff. If you have a naive eye, you'll be more in the category of the kind of stuff I mean, rather than fingernails. We're talking about lesser contrast, things of lesser contrast. So you blur your eye. I don't know if I mentioned that. I did mention that earlier. But you're blurring your eye, and you're seeing who are the lesser consequential guys. You're also, by the way, blurring your eye to see how the generalizations work, right? To see what things can just hang together for some time. And I'll show you uh, specifics on each of these things. Uh, the whole idea of generalization sounds like, oh, that's the nasty thing that we think of as impressionism. They aren't trying what they see. They just generally sort of make it. Well, yeah, that amateur amateur does that, but but that's not true. The the impressionist and there again, I recommend highly that you read Gamble's Twilight of Painting, the two chapters on uh, the two or three chapters on impressionism and academic to begin to separate that in your own mind, what that means. But the he has no disrespect for the Impressionists, starting with Velasquez. Uh, and, and of course, in my mind, probably even starting with uh, Leonardo. But um, but what we begin to work on, though, is the idea that there are broad areas that can be addressed in broad ways, that is to say, without looking into them and working on little things. And that's what you're going to have to learn. That's where the difficulties lie in your question, actually. But you can't do it successfully and you're very, unless you're very specific and articulate, which is the next point. Where those points, those, 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 those power things are. So there's this structural necessity, shall we say, in our field here to articulate well at the beginning. This is now, again, all the horses idea. You articulate well. When you say it's, these, are the prior, these are the priority areas, then something about these areas needs to be articulated well. Or else the generalization, the whole thing will be a generalization. Do you see how I mean that? And that's useless. Uh, so, but does so? I've had students say to me that be, when I say you need to be more articulate, they'll say, "Do you mean do I need more details?" So, <laughs> that's where that's one of those things where I I find it very difficult to speak to you if you understand if you think that way. But no, we need the look of nature there so that it. And, and this is the way we think. Uh, that was the way I think, and what you see fairly characteristic of this way of thinking, and that is that there is a, a need for articulation of enough of a, an area so that it will hold that location. It's like setting up a fortress there. So when your eyes over here, it can actually see that. But by the time you get around to here and here and here, it actually implies the whole figure you're drawing. Do you see where I'm going with that? And I think you can see that in the drawing of the, the horse that I, I'm showing in here in a minute. So. Um, uh, where are the flies coming from? This is wintertime, guys. Yeah, the heat's just come on. It's hatching out flies. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but all over the place at once now. If you're working on details, as Joe said, um, in little areas, and you're just glued there, you're not all over the place at once. So you may want to make this part of your, your, your working uh, 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 points part of your working structure, be all over the place at once in the start. By the way, one thing I didn't write here that we're trying to do, we have in mind that we're trying to cover the canvas in the start, have a start that covers the canvas. Now, I typically do that on a Friday, as I've said to you, because I like to work, I like to begin the rest of the painting, the rest of the event of making the painting on Monday when everything is nice and dry. <laughs> so, um, and I don't care what size the painting is, that's my plan is to, to get that lay in if it's a big painting, minimally in one day, if it's a smaller one in a couple of hours, which you, it's not a very good thing to have in hand if the places you've drawn are crappy, the color notes you put down are poor in relation to each other. So this idea of being all over the place at once implies nothing about sloppiness. It actually, it actually requires precision, but what it really requires above all else is you don't get lost in little inconsequential things. Inconsequential meaning they don't have big impact. They don't have a grand impact on the whole. Now, you might argue that, of course, every color has an impact, right? Every little spot, every little unit does. But you'll see, even in the conversation, even of Monet, you'll see that he's creating a field that's called the sky. It's a field of blue moving down toward 
something more golden at this at the horizon line and that's a major unit that he's working on and I'll show you that very quickly here uh, but that's that's a major thing but it takes a lot of if he's using his broken color he's going to be having color movements in there that sort of thing but he's not getting lost in them major color movements are fine but counting every little tiny thing instead of just trying to get the large thing by using the marks the broken color and all that sort of stuff you'll see how I mean that uh, so yeah so in the next one here I'm talking about the preliminary it's very surprising to me actually how nicely this flows because I actually couldn't come up with a good way to uh, to, 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 to order these 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 points um, but so a lot of what's in the start is is very preliminary and one of the things we do is we're, we articulate but we articulate in a way that's effective but not perfected okay uh, so there's a difference between what we're doing in the start and the finish. Although I have to say to you, there are times when I'm doing a portrait that I articulate, say, the hairline at the top, and I don't change it. Now that's not a common thing, but <laughs> but I sometimes don't change it until the end of the painting, and even then, don't touch it. It's done. It was already that good. So there's a certain amount of finish in the start, as we say. But that's where I'm talking about articulation in numbers of places around here. Your color relation shouldn't be going anywhere. By the time you get to the end of the start of a painting. You should have the beauty of the big impression. The great relationship should be just delighting you with that. What made you want to even paint it, right? The, that includes the spatial placement of things. It includes certain aspects of it linearly, um, uh, and I do mean by that in shape ways. And but spotting the distribution of spots the, and the color scheme, all those things should be on there for you. So in that last line there, the, a big question hangs around the idea of, of where to work and when. That really is a big deal. And that's back again to what Joe's talking about as well. Where to work and when and how long is another one. So, you know, I don't, I often say to students, I don't need more drawing. I need better drawing. <laughs> I don't want you drawing a lot of things. I want you drawing a few things well. And that really is the difference between, and then you have to make choices, right? And, 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 and then differentiate between majors and minors and, and, and get to know what that even means. But you got the first thing you, you might want to do, though, is blur your eye. And if you don't blur your eye enough, you won't know what the majors are. And I'm talking about the areas of first impact. So, and, you, and by the way, you probably won't even see the majors. So let's just talk about the, I'm talking about the major masses. You might even miss that. So I'm just going to look at a photograph of this first one. Did I do that? Yeah, there it is. And you might push this away a little bit so it's not stuff, stuffed up in your face so you can really see this as a more broadly, which is what you need to think about nature whenever you're painting it, by the way, the first way in your first way in your, you need to rather grasp this in big ways. So everyone looking at this should be able to see in really big ways that there's a dramatic light right down the middle of this thing, right? It picks up again in a couple places. That there's a secondary value. This is a, sort of the sergeant model, right? There's a secondary value up here. There's a tertiary value here. And there's a serious dark, you might say, here, trucking up, spotting its way around, and coming back out again over here, right? And of course, these, these parts of these things are darks also, so they can all be part of that conversation. Now, you could argue that this here, it might be the, the third value, right? So you have light, less light. This whole area could be taken as, the, as a third light. And then this one as a third value down third mid-tone, and then this one, and then the darks. Of course, there's, you know, that's the broadest way you could think about it. So what are the details when you're looking at a picture like this? So the difference on this side over here, for example, the details are all these little things along here. The thing that isn't a detail is this great sweep. Maybe even the relative projection of spots like this, you know, there's three different spots or two different lights in here on this curve. So that's a, that's a, in the class of a, not a detail, the bigger abstraction here is not a detail. It's going to have to be in there at some point, but you need to have put down enough of these points, some, something specific about these points. And when we look at the decamp, you'll see what I mean. And the same thing over here, something specific so that it marks the territory. Uh, you can see that this one here is a little more leftward and, uh, you know, it's, I'm sorry, it's closer to the frame, to the right edge this, than this one is, right? This is further over. All in the interest of variety, right? That would be the right way to, you'd want to frame it that way. Um, but um, if you blow your eyes, you'll see a lot of stuff inside here. 
you know, all sorts of things inside here that you aren't going to paint. Now, I don't tell you not to paint the colors. I, I want you to paint if there's a movement in color, even if the value is hanging together. If you can blur your eyes and that value really hangs together, then make the colors move. Don't, don't, you really need to know the color scheme. And the best way to go at it is in this first phase when everything is loosey-goosey. So, but you can see that everything minor, uh, and by the way, in the color of this red, for example, there may be many minor reds. But if you're looking big at the painting, you won't be into those yet. You'll just be interested in making three reds here, some red here, and some red here, or whatever. Do you see, follow me? Uh, those are the big play. That's the big play. And that's the opposite of the detail. The detail is the little stuff inside it. The detail would be the little stuff on top of this roof here. I'll counting all these little things in here. But remember that what we're doing is we're talking about the setup of a painting, right? The, 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 the setting up of the major is done with the major stuff, right? You could say it's the setting up of the majors. But every area has minor propositions, right? Stuff to deal with. Uh, you could, I just discussed this big long light in here, but you can see that it has dot, shapes inside it. When are you going to do those, right? Are you going to do those right now and be spending two and a half hours right here and never get around to the rest of the painting? See the importance of being all over the place at once in the start. So, so what, so if you blur your eyes, you'll see that if you're going to, there's going to be some need for an articulation here, but you don't need to articulate this spot here. You can let this just turn in from a blue into a white and not think about it, but you must articulate this. That's a placeholder that reads. And so that's where we talk about the one-sided drawing. If you have a value blob, decide which er edge of it you're going you're gonna to use as the placeholder. Very much like floating a line, we float effects, right? And you can do placements with those sorts of things. Um, so, but you, do, you should be able to understand from this and what we mean by details. Once you get down into an area like this, for if you're blurring your eyes, you might find that th these two lines here are far more important, these two here, than the, little, than the cross lines in the windows. That's again in the same class as majors versus minors uh, of detail, right? That's a step down. So this would be a detail, the whole window area would be a detail. On the wall, it would be a subplot. That's all I mean by it. <laughs> And these guys are subplots within that, right? So we talked about the A1, A1 uh, lowercase d to, to, to uh, I, I, you know, to I, 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 I. All right. Um, so that, but there, but so if you, if I said to you that there's a, if you saw that there was a lot of, if you're starting to find a lot of little things inside here to draw and you're not getting this thing right to this thing, then you're, that's when you're in the wrong zone, right? And so you could say, there, yeah, but there are. There's lots of movements in there. Yeah, but at what point? So this is where I say so much about when. It's a big when issue. Um, I know I've dealt with this before. I think in the last time I did, it was much more about the visual order. Um, but um, but it's, that's the way it's going to be all through this whole thing. It's more important that you have you have the light play of this whole mass of light to this, to this, to this, right, shall we say, just in terms of the lights, than it is anything that happens inside them. I just happen to have found that if you deal with like a, the, the sharpest edge in an area, you're also setting yourself up in other ways. But this isn't a detail until you go around here and do all of this thing and turning it into an object, then you're going to spend way too much time there. So I found a way to paint, to talk about the leading edge in different places, and I think you'll see that in other places, other, others of my conversations. Try to deal with the leading edge and not the entire shape or object. You don't want to get down here and start saying tables to yourself. You want to blur the heck out of your eyes, and as green comes across here and it turns into something slightly darker and then turns red and turns back into a green again, and we don't get involved in it, well, let's get into this in a different one, but that's the, what we're talking about. This stuff, for the, for the moment, you see, is a detail. It's unimportant if you're after bigger things. And you are at the start, always after bigger things. So let's just go down. Let's look at the first. Uh, this is the breadth discussion and some other stuff too. But this is a Vermeer. And in the background, there's a painting that's laid in very broadly. This is called Broadly Laid In. And you can see he's got shape, quality, and a big, big masses. He doesn't have any little stuff inside those masses, though, uh, to speak of, right? You, you, you. Yeah, I guess there are some indications, sort of vague indications of eyes and things. Uh, but you see that the overall thing is a far more of a generalization than this is. There's a ton more information in here. So detail is a thing about information, isn't it? 
there's high level information, strong, important information going around. And then there's less important information going around. And in these days of weird, weird stuff in the news, that's a very important thing to know the difference between. But um, you should be able to see that fairly clearly though. This is a case of elaboration, lots of detail. And this is a question of a different phase of the painting. And uh, what we're gonna be talking about as we go through here is when do you do these things? So that's why I say keep blurring your eyes. If you blur your eyes at these two here, you'll see. If you blur your eyes a ton, you'll see this. Isn't that interesting? What you're going to see this is sans detail, okay? You're going to, this here is going to be that if you blur your eyes enough, okay? But the value relationships of these things have to be right. The placements of these players that are, always, that are strong when you blur the heck out of your eyes has to be right. The sizes of the masses have to be right to each other. These are all things that you can't get out of, right? And so you put your time into articulating whatever will help you with that. And, and by the way, in our world of the arabesque, as we use that term, the figure created by the leading effect, say this figure here, has to be right in its width to length and its general, general tilt. It has that. Do you see how big those are compared to the stuff of things, the little stuff of things, which we think of as coming later? So he could have painted, if he sat down there like certain realists of our day, he might have sat down there and just noodled up lines on knuckles. You can see what I mean and how that would be counterproductive. By the way, everybody knows this is self-evident information. I'm only saying it because it needs to be said in words to, keep, to get you to separate it, like naming the pig and get you to work on it in your own way, in your own timing. Uh, this is that, well, from that video you, sh you can look at, which uh, is, is, a, is a demonstration and in this video, I'm actually showing you my inclination to separate majors from minors. You can see I didn't do a whole bunch of work inside the nose area. And this is a busy area that can't be left. This area is full of stuff. But you see what I'm after is the major, the major relationships between this and this and this. You can see those are much more major, right? And the great, uh, the great, you know, the great proportions of things like this, rather than every little proportion all the way along, those would be in the class of something closer to a detail, right? Now, a major shift up in the show up in here, I might have shown that. In fact, I did show that, and that's because I needed to make a point, to make a point to make point angles with, right? In a spot like this, if I'm working up more detail, it's because of the usefulness of it for making for articulating the relationship on an angle from this point to this point, and so on. That's what you're going to see all through here. It's, so that's the usefulness of the when thing is a big question. So if you sit in it for its own sake. That's why I say every, all of us are serving the greater thing, right? That's our job, right? What's, you know, this is, this, is, this is the service of our maker, right? We're just servants down here. But so I'm saying that in a big grand way. <laughs> if this is actually a spot that's living for itself, instead of, is, it, 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 it just articulating itself because it feels like it, you're gonna have a, a whole bunch of wars going on and we're not gonna have any unity. So this part here it has to, but it finds that it has to do a, a better job. It has to put more time in doing better things just to be useful to the other guys out here, okay? So that's, that's the way you'll find it working. And I don't think I better elaborate. <laughs> um, you can see that I've, um, I've underplayed many things um, in that way, but it's the subplot. So you can see the reflected light back here. Where is it? I don't have that in there. I, now, I, it may vaguely look to you like it's in there, but I've absolutely not used it, put it in there. On the other hand, this thing came around and got lighter going up here. I just let that happen. I don't think I've made any shape work in there, but you can see that I allowed the midtone to get lighter. I apologize, this is from a different angle. I don't know if we have any shots from the right angle, but I think you can get the idea across. Um, yeah, but you, even on here, you can see that I found it more important to make these lo this long shape here than to do a lot of stuff, uh, secondary stuff. Certainly not worrying about this, except to the extent that I actually needed to get an angle with. You know, that sort of thing would be the way my, the old mind works. Um, yeah. But you can do that. You can pick on my work. You can pick on your own work and ask yourself, are you dealing with majors? Is there a timing thing? Or are you busy working on unimportant things who's simply unimportant because their time hasn't come? There's no such thing as an unimportant thing, actually, right? But everything is a function of the greater thing, and it has to perform its, in its time, right? So, uh, and I think you'll find, and this is, a, I'm pick on this one now because it's another one of my demonstrations. 
But I think you can see that there's an attempt to be very articulate and accurate in the majors. And I've done this one here. This is an effect more than a shape, more than a sharp edge. This is a soft edge, but a, but a powerful effect. But I've had to establish a top and, and an exit point, a bottom here. Uh, and so there's time going into this thing that you might say, isn't that a detail? And it's only a detail if you can't you know, if you need it, it's not a detail. If it's, if it's function, so that's why I say it's a, it's a thing you're calling a detail. If you're in the visual world, you'll understand this. If you think it's a part of human anatomy, or if you think it's a button on a shirt, you might not understand what I'm saying. But in the visual order of things, we, you see that this is the major effect, is this thing right here. It's three basic, you might argue, it's three basic, a gold, a, 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 a blue-gray, and a dark purple, you know. That's, you might, <clears throat> those, these are major categories of stuff you see in here. Uh, the, um, but it's more important to get, for example, the, the skull, as I've said before, and the tube, and even if you want to call that the flatness of the chest, compared to, you know, and, and get relative form in the grand forms, than to be worrying about every little thing that happens on an eyelid at this time in the painting. Do you see how that works? So everything really is a the details, is, Gamel once said, do you, you know, I, he said, uh, that looks dirty. And I, I said, this looks dirty. Maybe I said it to him. And, and he said, do you know what dirt is? Can you define dirt? And he said, it's matter out of place. Well, detail is, is anything you're working on that isn't important in a big way at the right time. So, that's a, so the detail really is, you see, it's not quite the appropriate word. It's a little different word we're probably looking for. But you can see the same orientation here. This is a big lay-in. This one here is more studied, and you can see there's another level of, a, of authority and articulation in this one um, by a bit, by a bit. But you can see what he's done, though. He's working on getting this shape really good. He's working on placing these things really well. All these guys that are strong players, and even the line down here or whatever, all this stuff about setting up top, bottom, placing it well left and right, which this thing does, and, and, and so all these categories of setting up the major value relationships, the major effects, that's the category of stuff. If you work on those for a big cause, for the great impression on the, paint, on the, on the screen, and sometimes that means the placement of the whole, and so other times it means just the visual order, and other times it means the value scheme. But we're talking about those kinds of things. Establish them in big ways, try to get all those things dealt with by the, beginning, by the end of the beginning of the painting, the end of the start. All right. So here's what, you know, I'm talking about generalizations, and I've mentioned this in a recent video too, so I don't, it's, I don't mean to bore you. But you can see that he's not down here being specific about these folds and dresses and stuff, but he is giving it the illusion of being foldy, <laughs> or even this area of being slightly busy. Now, there's a certain value to being loose in your mark making, um, but when you have texture, you're loose in your, uh, you're actually delivering value contrast you know, spot, 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 it has the feeling of being hectic. But it's still a generalization. There's a general movement of the color from lighter and more chromatic into cooler, I should have said and warmer, and, and into cooler over here. This old Leonardo conversation, right? <laughs> the shadows being blue in the daytime. And you can see that same thing is happening all over this place. But you can see that he's doing things that are rather broad here, and he's not getting into it closely. Uh, even in the articulation of the tree, there are certain things he seems to be meaning, and you'll notice that when you walk, when you look at these kinds of painters, you'll know where they put time in, by the by, by, by the by the fact that it looks like this. Now he got to the certain point in the painting, and if he didn't have this face in there, it would have not looked like his general impression, because the fair, sheer busyness of the face is always a factor in the center of interest when there's a human involved. So, and this busyness, the two spots of the eye, etc., and the big form even the hair and the hairline, all these things associated with it. There's the, these are classic ways to set up the figure, but they're things that set themselves up. So one of the things we try to avoid is making a face like this and making all this a really hectic behind it so the head never isolates. This is just, these are big categories though, because we're trying to feature, when you do a portrait, you're actually trying to talk about the, the human, even though you're also just making a beautiful field, right? But that is in the nature of subject. Uh, there's an element like that. So you can see it over here too, that he's put time into drawing here and here. And he's put some time into general placement of this, some specifics, some more specifics. He's gotten into low levels here. And uh, I, 
I, you know, from the point of view of detail, you could say that's detail, but it doesn't look like he spent time on it. So that's when you have to think of it as a pejorative, right? If you're spending time on the little things. So he can say, well, look at all these leaves he counted over here. I can assure you that's tentative. And, and these leaves are shifting all the time anyway, so it's in the category of some of those things, even like the dress, when she comes back the second day, those forms are all going to be in a different place. So, um, you know, the fold. So, um, uh, yeah, I think I lost my way just a little bit there. But hopefully you can see what we're talking about here, though, about the word generalization. So this gets the whole canvas covered with broad ideas, with true colors that are well in hand, not, not refined, not every little teeny spot being done for itself, which would be a, a detail. Now, remember, if it costs you time, you only have so much neural energy in a painting, by the way. And I like to use the best part of my brain energy at the beginning, which is called setting up the composition, setting up the color scheme. So I really want to put the best of my energies in when I'm fully inspired. I want them in that first phase. And if I get lost in, the, in little folds down here, I'll be exhausted before I ever ultimately finish, finish making this grand statement of the big impression. And that's what I want. This is a perfectly good start, right the way it is now. And uh, it doesn't need any more details than that. You could walk away, and then tomorrow you're all ready to work on some other segment of it. Some of these, uh, they may, he may be out there a second day. It doesn't look like it, though, on either one of them. Yeah, it really doesn't. This is very, this is very superficial, one layer. Um, so that shows you what you can do, though, that you can get to that. I better hurry up uh, here. I think I'm losing. Oh, my God, this is long. Uh, <laughs> so here's Zorn doing the same thing. You can see the... Um, you can see the idea of not doing lots of little things. Now, this is a finished painting. This is possibly a little less developed, but you can see the mentality is the same. Um, he's, he, will, he will have put time into these things uh, because he needs that relative business. He also needs certain of these players to be in the right place. But when you're moving it to a finish, these things become very... They be, first of all, they might have been generally this talking to something over here. But when you get closer to the end, then this whole area has to be organized. All these bumps and edges and all that stuff have to be well organized to themselves, they, having previously been set up in grand ways to all the other, you know, like the arabesque that we talk about, having been previously all set up. Um, uh, yeah, this quote, I, um, Le Francois was one of the guys that, I think Amari Duval quotes, but he says the primary goal is to give Ang a drawing who's finished must have breadth rather than elaboration. So we could talk about a start in that same category. A start uh, would have breadth rather than elaboration. Uh, I think I won't go further. I was going to tempt you with this stuff here. All I would tell you to do, I'm going to leave this here on the screen. You can put it up for yourself. But I would, all I would ask you to do is blur your eye and you can see, see if you can see what we would call a detail, what you would call a detail. And I'll just, if you blur your eye and it goes away, I'll just give you a hint. <laughs> it's a detail. And detail, remember, as I said, it's a timing thing. It's a, it's a thing at the wrong time. It's not a thing you can't have. So I wanted to just jump now down to, um, I did show you that. I want to just jump down now to, um, uh, by the way, this is in that class too. I, I don't need to show you this. I've said everything and it's already been 40 minutes. I'm showing you here now that you can take a, um, this is a different wave. This is almost like the Vermeer. This is a decamp. But you can see in the background here, there's this thing on the wall where you can see the generalizations that don't contain detail. And then you can see the later on the, the, the isolation of more refined detail. But that's because you're coming out of a fog more and more and more. So notice the difference between this and the, um, uh, this one, right? But the approach is, is adequately similar. It's, it, it's pretty much in the ballpark of that. And here you see me doing it. This is, this is me just simply um, getting the broadest notes out there and trying to, find, trying to find the majors that set up the drawing tops. This stuff, this stuff here, these points over here. But keeping my eye sort of on the idea of what the general color scheme is doing. This isn't a good one-to-one. -one. These almost never work out that way because of the cameras. But, but you get some idea if you blur your eye at this one, what I'm talking about. So, um, and here's, uh, but this one, let's just end on this one. I, I want to talk about um, uh, uh, detail as a point of style. And so what happens with the difference between an Ang and a Benson? Uh, I'm sorry, between a Paxton and a Benson. <laughs> is that Freudian? I doubt it. Well, in a way it is, because I really do think that Ang was his chief influence, uh, the guy who modeled 
Mm. Might have modeled himself after more than anybody else. But this is a Benson interior. You know, uh, what does she got? It? She's got it. Oh, she's got her own little bit of jewelry here and some other stuff, whatever that is there. And notice how I say whatever that is. So you would argue that this painting, and I've done this, by the way, with Paxton's, this painting could have been the lay in for that painting. In other words, this painting might earlier on have looked rather like that one. And when you see the nude by Paxton, you can see a lot more of that sense. And I conceivably should have shown you that, but you can look it up online, this, this, this painting of a nude, it's a start by Paxton. And, um, but some people, at, now this is as a point of style, some people believe that a good painting, Gamble even talks this way, that a good painting is, you gotta read all the beads and all these things, a good, a good representational painting, the high end of really good representational painting, all the beads are drawn like this. And this, this sort of realism is is some sort of a standard and it just isn't by the way because it's not that's not a beauty standard that's a detail standard that's a that's a funny and i'd say frankly flawed idea now to the extent that this is about form and there are great forms and medium forms and beady forms that's not then that it comes into the back into the camp of being of being about uh visual play you know date uh, uh, form play you know, at that point by the way right so the golds, relating to the golds, is in the same class. All these golds playing to each other is in the class of pictorial delight, of the music that we're talking about. Realism doesn't live there. I mean, it doesn't mean you couldn't put paint something area more realistically than others and have a series of those and then make them a musical set, shall we say. In some sense, that's sort of what, what Benson does. But but in all cases, we're still talking about the same thing, the beauty of the relationships of these, of these greens into golds is the same as in this field. But you'd say stylistically though, this person has decided uh, to noodle uh, details, to noodle everything into realism. You could say academically, and this guy has chosen not to. And you would be, you'd be probably wise not to make a decision about which one of these is better. <laughs> You do it at your own at your own risk, as they say. But I better get out of here. You have this has been a little extended. My goodness, uh, I happened to be listening to somebody else's video recently, and he said, "Oh yeah, I went on for an hour and a half. They loved it." Yeah, I hope I hope this isn't too burdensome for you. But just put in mind this one little old thing that this painting here has already got all the magic you could possibly want in a painting, and it's in a sense m m more. Um, satisfied, um, it got to the magic and stopped and wanted to show you what the visual magic was. This one had a different thing sort of in mind and that was in the realist model uh, where it had a, another conscience that's sort of a different conscience. So that's a point of style, right? You following that idea? So the realism model will tend this way. The impressionist model will tend to be happy when the when these visual all the visual relations are dancing to each other, and that's where you see, even though Degas has these skills, you see him much more uh, a, a player like this. In the end, that's where he's really really amazing. All right, that's enough for today. Um, think this through. Detail is a matter of timing, isn't it? More as much as anything else. So I won't review our points. I'll be here all the rest of the day. I hope that's enough for you, Joshua, to get started. And Joe too. At that point. Don't stop, go get caught in these little areas. Be all over the place at once, but you have to do good work at these points. So the ability to articulate something like this, to be effectively doing what it's doing, and if you're a good painter, then it's gonna be also the right amount of curve, it's gonna be accurate. This person is not gonna look deformed. <laughs> Just those kinds of categories, even though you're stopping short of being a noodler uh, to the nth degree. That's a point of style. All right. Uh, so I'll see you next time, and I hope this uh, was helpful to those several of you who are haven't picked up on this kind of idea yet. Pay attention to the visual order. You're going to be okay. All right, thanks again, Stephen Jay, and I um, hope you all have a wonderful painting week. See you next time.